guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a warm, friendly, helpful vermicomposting community, you are in the right place. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the African night crawlers in the vermi bag Little Mammoth, and we're going to be switching up the way that I do the bin. So instead of spending all my time doing the shredding of the cardboard and the grinding up of the food, you know, chopping everything up, putting it in the blender, freezing it, all that, we're going to do a low maintenance bin and see how, see how well it works. So I'm going to show you on the diagram on the board behind me how the vermi bag works. I know a lot of the times when I'm showing you the bin, all you ever get to see is the straight down look at it and you don't really know how it works on the different levels. It basically works like a vertical version of blue, kind of like a, a wedge system, but only vertical. So let's take a look. So over here, I've got the Fermi bag, which is about 34, 35 inches wide, and it is about 21 inches deep, and it is also about 21 inches in width. Ish, not an art school person. So what we're looking at here normally is we put in the ground food and the prepared bedding in the top. And then over time, it gets smaller and smaller. It gets more done and more compressed as it goes all the way down into the deeper part of the bin. So one of the reasons why we do all the shredding and the chopping and the blending is so that when we get to the, the harvest, and we get to see our final product, it's very fine. It doesn't have a lot of clumps in it. We don't have to put a lot through. All we have to do is sift it a little bit and put it in our garden. Or you don't even have to sift it most times. What I'm looking at is if I go ahead and just put in full food and full cardboard, what is that gonna do to my end product? And are the worms gonna be able to finish things in the same rate as it goes down. So if I feed every three weeks, which is my current go-to, will the worms be done with the food by the time I get done? And when I do a harvest, am I gonna have big chunks left over? I don't know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put full-size food in there, and then we're also gonna put in full-size chunks of cardboard. I'm gonna get everything wet because, you know, they're not gonna eat, they're not termites, they're worms. So they are going to need to have the cardboard wet, but I am not going to chop it up and I'm not going to chop the food up except for to make it fit so the worms can get in it. So it's very possible that I'll put a sheet of cardboard in there as big as, you know, a sheet of paper or even bigger. So put in the comments below, what do you think is going to happen with this experiment? Do you think the worms are going to be okay and everything's going to go as usual? Or are they going to have a problem and then I'm going to have a bunch of junk to sift out at the end? All right, let's go take a look at the worm bag and see what it's doing. All right, here we are back at the bin. And I'm taking out my fly trap, which the worms have decided to get into the little plastic bag that holds it shut. So bear with me for a second and rescue my little worms. Okay, so here we are. It's been about three weeks since we've looked in on this bin. And you can see that right there on top, they have made some beautiful castings. I am seeing quite a bit of springtails. I'm thinking it's tis the season. I think some of the other worm channels have been seeing an uptick in their uh, springtail population and it looks like my worms want to be the cool kids too and have their springtails over for Thanksgiving vacation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off to the side all of the leftover stuff from last time and we'll kind of take a look in here and see what they've gotten around to. I know we kind of had a big feeding and so we fed off to one side. So I'm seeing quite a bit of, of bedding left over, so that's good. Means they didn't go hungry. All the worms are uh, nicely up at the top here where they should be. And it is a little bit dry, but not bad. I mean, if you look at it, it's a little dry. It's not anything bad. The furnace just started kicking on full time now. 
It's, you know, Thanksgiving weekend, and uh, we already have about two inches of snow on the ground. So, tis the season. I will have to start looking in and putting water in the bins every single week now that, uh, unfortunately, winter is no longer coming. It is here. Uh, so, looking into the, some really long-term food here. This pineapple's been in here a couple of months. And you can tell it's uh, nowhere near being done, but the worms are all through it, which is great. And in my opinion, just because something takes a long time to eat doesn't mean I shouldn't have the worms do it. Some people do um, not feed long-term food simply because they don't want to deal with it. Um, I don't mind. Here is a avocado pit been here a couple of months. It's got some uh, of the worm bin helpers, the little snow white pot worms. So just digging through, I, if you dig a little bit deeper, and you're really not meant to dig real deep in these bins, but for the sake of the conversation earlier, you can see how the moisture is just fine and there's not a whole lot of things down deep. Um, corn cobs, a couple of things, but the moisture's fine down deep, and so we're going to start our project of the garbage bin. So hopefully I will be able to get a harvest next time, which will allow us to have more room to put garbage, because I think it's going to take more room to do this. Uh, you know, the food will take up more room than it does if you cut it all up. I mean, that makes sense. I don't have to tell you guys that. Uh, so anyway, here we are, and we're going to start the garbage bin. I'm going to kind of move the old stuff out to the side so that I have a, a deeper area to put the, the garbage. So we'll start with a layer of our old, and then I have some new garbage. So the first thing I'm going to start out with is some Amazon boxes. Um, obviously not shredded, but I am going to make them fit in the bin here. So that's going to be the basis of the food that we're going to feed. So it all fits nicely in the bin, more or less. There we go. Now let me get them their feeding. I am still freezing my food because otherwise I will end up with gnats in the house. So uh, although I'm not going to puree the food or chop the food, they are still going to get frozen food because I don't need any gnats. Okay, there we have the rest of the, the green tomatoes that I didn't have anything left to do with. I've got more uh, salsa verde and stuff that I know what to do with. We've got a, a sweet potato here that started to rot when it was cured, and uh, of course our favorite toilet paper rolls is going in here. I'm going to get them a little bit more cardboard to top this up right after I give them some grit. Now that they're uh, not going to have their prepared bedding, I'm no longer going to have the luxury of forgetting the grit. Um, giving them large food like this that's not broken down probably will be helped along with the grit. So let me get them some more bedding. Okay, not sponsored, but you know, all the cardboard goes in. Get that all covered up. And the next time what we'll do is we will harvest so that um, this will have more room to bulk up and not be so, you know, completely full. But looking at the amount of cardboard that I generally put in the bin, this seems like an insane amount. But this is um, probably less than what I would put in if it was all shredded. Isn't that crazy? All this cardboard in big chunks looks so huge, but when it's all shredded up, it's hardly nothing. So also you're seeing that I have colored cardboard here. Um, that's fine, so long as it's not paper, so or not laminated paper. So as you're seeing, I'm tearing off the color part here. This is all coming apart just fine. Some boxes actually are laminated with plastic, but one of the ways that you can tell 
is by getting it wet and seeing if the lamination comes apart. And I'm not seeing any evidence of that here. This is just paper. And although I did say I wasn't going to baby them with uh, preparing the food, just because it's winter, I do need to get this cardboard wet before I feed it to them. So let me know in the comments below, how much do you prepare your food and bedding for your worms? Do you spend a lot of time doing it? Or do you uh, do something in the middle? You know, what is your plan for all of this? So this looks a little bit crazy, but it is gonna be fine. I am 100% sure. I don't see any gnats in here, so I don't think I need to take and put that gnat trap back in, but I am going to put that plastic back on top to preserve the moisture here. So I'm already starting to implement some of my winter programs to preserve moisture in the bin. Because this is a fabric bin that works so well in the summertime to um, make sure the moisture doesn't build up too bad. Unfortunately, in the winter time, it causes things to be a little bit dry and I do have to take extreme measures. So this is one of them. I have a plastic um, packing foam sheet on top that I put on here. And as you saw, when I pulled it back, everything was nice and uh, comfortable for the worms. All right, so let me know what you think of this experiment. Um, and if you like the vermi bag, or the African Nightcrawlers, I have a playlist that I will put right over here. And if you don't like that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.